let's get started, okay? Um, so go ahead and pick one of your scrapbook pages um, to use. And uh, what we're gonna use this for, um, you can see on my sample here, I've got some edging. So what I'm gonna do, um, and what I, I, what is easiest for me is to steal the corners of the paper. So like I'll fold it so that all the all four corners are in one spot. And then I'll just kind of rip my corners off here. You don't have to do it. I mean, you can rip strips of paper and however you want to do it is fine. Like if you just want to rip them into strips. Uh, my scrapbook paper is much larger than my canvas here. So I'll have plenty of extra. Um, but basically what we're going to do is we're going to rip enough paper to go around that edge. I think I am going to try to focus mine so that I get a little more of that um, color in there. And it's okay if they overlap a little bit. It's okay if they don't completely touch. I just kind of place it on there to make sure that I've got um, the edges fairly covered. Um, like I said, it's okay if some white po pops through or if they overlap. And then I'm going to use uh, my matte medium, uh, whatever adhesive you have, just to glue those on there. And do not be shy with the glue. Going to create lots of layers so you want to make sure your very first layer is on there nice and secure so just one by one add these papers around your edge a lot of the the middle edge here is going to be covered so i'm more worried about lining up that outside edge but you can always cut anything off that you need to as well. Right, the next page here that I'm going to use after you get your border on, 
uh, I'm going to start tearing up this music page here and my music page I use an actual page from a music book so it's a little bit larger um, if you printed one off it's probably more to size but you'll still need um, to cut it so um, basically what I want to do is just create kind of a background in the middle here um, and so I'm just going to tear off the edges and I want that rough edge um, and then I'm going to kind of just eyeball it to make it fit on the page So you'll see it's not perfect. Um, I've even got a little patch here that's kind of white. I'm not, I'm not gonna concern myself too much with that. And I'm just kind of gonna center this on the page. And then again, I'm gonna add a nice thick layer of my Mod Podge or Matte Medium, whatever adhesive you're using. Um, put one underneath and put one on top. Make sure this baby sticks real good on there. And it doesn't matter if it's wet from previous step or not. It'll all just kind of mush, mush and blend. And if I get any wrinkles in there, I'm just kind of pressing them out to make sure this lays somewhat flat. I don't want any bubbles. Wrinkles I can deal with. Bubbles will cause lift. So just spread it out as much as you can. And if you are using um, one that's printed, um, just be careful that you don't over brush it because it will lift a little bit. And the next material or the next um, medium I'm going to work with is the gesso. So if you want to get that handy, that's what we'll be using next. All right, so I have squeezed out some white gesso here. Again, if you don't have the white gesso, you can use white acrylic. Uh, the thicker, the better. Um, but what I'm gonna do is take my knife here um, and I am gonna just um, kind of smear some of this around. I want a little bit to touch on my edgy uh, border here and I want a little bit on my background. Um, I wanna see the texture of the gesso, so I don't want clear um, swipes. Some of it I wanna see through and some of it I kind of want to block off some of that image. So I'm just smearing it around so that I get little touches of it on my edge and all over my music page. And this will help unify the edge with the background here.
And I hate to cover up some of these pretty colors, but I am going to add in touches of color with the acrylic paint as well. How much of your background you have showing through is totally a matter of preference. So you can just play with it until you are happy. going to um, move on to one of the next steps so this can dry just slightly I don't need it completely dry um, but by going back and forth that's it's helpful to let it dry in phases um, so the next step the next thing that we need to do um, is we're going to start tearing out some of our flower circles so choose you can use the same scrapbook paper or a complimenting a scrapbook paper, whatever your preference is, or you can try both and see what you like better. Um, but what I want to do is I'm going to create three flowers. Um, so I'm just going to create kind of three large scraps here. And I want to tear out a large circle, start large. Um, because it's easier to tear it down than it is to fix it if you've gone too small. So just try tearing kind of a large imperfect circle. Like I said, you can always make it smaller, but you cannot go bigger if you need to. And once I get my circle shape, I'll kind of work it down to the right size. And this also kind of helps me make sure I keep the colors in there that I want and all that good stuff. almost like paper whittling. I just kind of work it down until I'm happy. And they can be three totally different sizes. That's totally up to you. I think for this one I had um, I only used one piece of scrapbook paper so I think I might do two smaller little circles I want to make sure that they're not I don't have an even number I'm gonna work with odds here but I'll add these little brighter colors down in there a variety here just because I'm not sure what colors I want for these flowers so I'm just kind of playing with them right now really we're going for three the goal is three all right once you have 
three of your large circles. What we want to do is tear out the centers and I do that by folding it in half and it's not going to be a perfect circle because it's torn and that's what we want um, and I am just going to very carefully pull out a circle shape from the middle here so when I open it the center is hollow empty hollow I don't know what the word is that I'm looking for there Um, if you are totally, I should have mentioned this, if you don't like the, tip, the torn look, you can always use scissors too. There are no rules here. We do what we want. Again, you're going to need three main circles. And then what you're going to do is you've got these centers that you've ripped out. Um, again, you're going to want to fold those in half and then rip out another ring to use for the center. until you have it where you, where you like it. Um, you know, some of them may be bigger, some of them may be smaller. We're just gonna tear those babies, and make them work. I work a lot with torn paper. I really like the look of it, but I understand some people prefer a much cleaner edge. That's okay. scissors that's okay too I think I might cut down my edges a little bit so they are clear so that they're not touching but that's a personal preference This is what we are going for. We are going to tear paper into two empty circles, and those are going to be our flower buds, our flower blooms. And then I had these two left over. I might turn those into some little buds at the bottom. I hate wasting paper. Once we have those, I'm going to set those to the side and we will come back to those. But hopefully now that's just given some of this the opportunity to dry a smidge. And what I'm going to do now, so I said to have a few colors of acrylic paint. Um, and I like to smudge these colors around um, again. So. I am going to start the three colors I'm choosing. I'm kind of working with a rusty, um, the grungy palette today. So I've got this yellow ochre, I've got a celery green, and I've got a blue. Um, but what I'm gonna do is put some of this on my palette, and then I'm gonna get my scraper and I might add a smudge or two in the background 
but I don't want to add a lot of color in the background. I'm going to add little pinches of color um, again around this edge. And I'm just being free with it, blending, moving. Um, don't overthink it, just throw it on there. I'm going to do this with all three colors and you don't have to use a lot of all three color you know use you can use more of one less of another whatever makes your heart happy and it's also going to depend on that scrapbook paper too how much do you want of that scrapbook paper to show through which color is your favorite um, is there anything you want to hide? Keep those things in mind as you're working. And if your gesso is not completely dry, like mine's not completely dry and that's fine. I just didn't, I wanted some of it to be dry. Um, so I put most of my color on, I think with the, the ochre and the celery green. And I'm just gonna add some tiny touches of this blue. I don't have a whole lot left that I want to cover, and I don't want too much blue. I just want to add maybe some little hints here and there. reason why I call this one grungy flowers um, not just because it looks a little grungy but um, it really is okay to get in there and smear and move and um, and play that's what this is about all right um, what we're gonna do now is glue on our flowers and so I'm going to play with the placement a little bit first so I want to put those on there and then add in the center so I know where everything is going you're happy with that um, I will show you maybe I'll show you a little trick that I do um, when I'm working with this paper um, we need to glue these on and so I'm going to use just that matte medium Mod Podge again and put some in a little cup here on what I'm gonna do is take them each flower and I'm just gonna wet them just a little bit and that is gonna make this thick um, scrapbook paper pliable so I just took my paintbrush with water and added a little bit over the top now if you're using copy paper or something you printed you do not need to do this this is for if you've got kind of that heavy heavy um, difficult to glue on scrapbook paper so that's an optional step um, but we're just going to take some Mod Podge and glue those on um, just being cautious that your background is pretty dry I'm going to make sure that you're not pulling up any of your paint
always say don't overthink it and I'm overthinking it right now. So I'm just gonna get those on there. Oops. best you can not to let too many bubbles get in there or wrinkles you have to lift and then put it down again that's fine thick layer of Mod Podge or well, I guess I'm using that medium right over the top of that now I do want this to dry before I move on to the next step so I am gonna mute and I'm going to zap this with my heat gun um, if you've got a heat gun or a hair dryer you can use that or blow on it or even shake it up and down in the air, but we just want that adhesive to dry pretty well. Okay, now for the next step, I'm going to use my Stabilo All Pencil. Again, if you've got charcoal, you can use charcoal. Um, if you don't have either, just use your black paint marker. You'll just, if you're using a paint marker, make sure that um, your adhesive is dry because you don't want to clog up your paint marker. And I'm just going to use this to add an outline around my center circles and my outer circles. And I'm going to come back and activate this. gives it more of a defined edge. I'm also going to take the same pencil and I'm going to add a stem. When I do the stems, I like to hold it on the end of the pencil. I don't need to be real specific with my line, so I just kind of let it do what it's going to do. So I'm going to add those stems in there. Part is one of my absolute favorite things to do and that is activate this so what I've got here 
my little cup is some um, Mod Podge or Matte Medium. And I'm gonna mix a little bit of that with some water. Just, you know, a couple drops of water. I just wanna thin it down a little bit. So get yourself a nice mixture. okay if it's runny this is not something we need to we're not using it to stick we just um, we're going to use that sealing quality of the matte medium to keep um, we're going to activate it but it's also going to seal it in there so you want it to be I guess maybe the consistency of like melted ice cream And then I'm just going to use a small paintbrush and I'm just going to go around what I just put on there and it's going to smear it a little bit. It's going to make it um, the black brighter. I don't know if black can be brighter, but it's going to make it, I don't know, almost just blacker, I guess. And I really like this kind of smudgy crazy messy look and charcoal will, will do pretty much the same thing but by activating it here with um, using this uh, matte medium or Mod Podge and water mixture it's gonna oops I missed a spot it's gonna seal it in there so that it won't reactivate later so it, we won't be able to smudge it later So for the next step, um, again, before I get in there with my paint pen, um, I need the adhesive to dry. So this is kind of that optional step where we can add some, some texture on there. Um, I think I'm gonna use the granular gel. Um, the difference between pumice gel and granular gel if you're curious. Um, the granular gel's got clear, kind of clear chunkies in it. The pumice gel has gray pumice chunkies in it. Um, and the mica flake has some glitter chunks in it. So I think I'm gonna go with the clear. 
Um, but I'm just gonna get some of this on my brush and just maybe smear it into some places where I just think a little texture would be fun. And this is something, um, both the pumice gel, the, actually all three things that I'm using, um, you can mix with acrylic paint and make, add some color as well. I'm going clear. Just gonna add some chunkies on there. I also have one that's got like glass beads in it, which is pretty much the same as this granular gel. It's just glass instead of acrylic chunkies. Just gonna spread some of those on there. That's a quick step. And again, I just want this section here to be nice and dry so I can add my paint marker. So I am gonna zap it. I'm not too worried about the outside edges uh, because I'm not gonna use my paint marker but I do want the flowers to be nice and dry. Also, I will mention too, if you don't have a paint marker, if you have um, like a really thin liner brush, you can do the same thing with acrylic paint um, as I'm doing now. So get your paint marker, prime that baby up. Um, and what I like to do is create kind of a wonky center for my flower. Add some rays going out and fill in that middle space. And I try to move quickly because I don't like it to be even and perfect. If you like things to be even and perfect, you can go a little slower. And I'm also going to add those through here. This is where you can kind of have some fun. It takes, this takes a while to do this, but you can add whatever kind of lines and dots and goodies around the outside that you like. It's doodle time. Then I also like to add some around the outside edges and on the outside I put little I don't know what you call those like little dots at the end I just think it adds a little something extra but of course whatever you do in your painting it's up to you. So you can add squiggles, you can add loops, whatever you like. I kind of like these, um, I don't know, virus-like, amoeba-ish. Don't worry too much about everything being perfect because remember in nature it is not. Petals fall off and things break and they grow at different rates so 
just go for it. finished up my doodles and one thing I definitely want to remind everybody to do is sign your work always always sign your work 